Sandy, as Sandy mentioned, I started at a very young age. This is me at three years old, maybe four. I'm not really sure. Um, I still have those later hosen. Um, they're actually framed in a shadow box and hanging up. And every time my mom comes over, she cries. So what I want to do tonight is talk about um, street photography, but not the same way that others that we've listened to talk about street photography. I'm not going to be talking about um, post-processing. I'm not going to be talking about, um, you know, excellent pictures. Every photograph is not great. There are some that are just really not good at all. But I want to talk about um, the whole idea of what street photography is to me. And so I call it from the sidewalk, but I actually want to call it actually stories from the, side, from the sidewalk. Um, I'm going to not read through this whole thing because um, you're recording it and later on you can read it. But basically it talks about the difference between what we think about as cities being urbane versus cities being urban and um, what's beauty in the city and what's gritty and how that all comes together and how that works. So um, what I want to do is uh, photography, street photography to me is um, images that, of the human condition. Um, it does not have to include images of people. And I think that's where some street photographers go all kind of like batty and say, yes, it does. And my, my thing is, no, it does not. It shows, um, it does not have to include images, but it includes the human impact on the world. And so what I'm going to show tonight are images that um, go with all this um, sort of thing. Um, really important to me is every image must tell a story. If you put a book together of a bunch of images, uh, the book is the book and each image is either a chapter or something, but each image must tell a story. And what I want to show is how I go about telling that story, whether it works or not. Now, here's the important thing about telling the story. The photographer wants to tell you a story. Um, they have an idea, maybe it's pre-visualized, maybe they see something afterwards and they want to tell a story. My goal or um, my idea is that the story can be told by anyone. So as a photographer, I might have a particular story in mind, but as a viewer, you might see something totally different. And I think that's really important. And it doesn't matter to me, at least, whether my story comes through or whether some, you have your own particular story. Start up front, I'll let you know what my equipment is. Um, I started out with a Nikon F2 Photomic and a 50 millimeter lens. Um, I went up to, um, when digital came out, I struggled, I, I, I went kicking and screaming into the digital world and I got a D80 and I still use a 50 millimeter lens. Um, I also use a 12 to 24 zoom and I'll tell you about why I do that. And I've been known to use an 18 to 135 as my telephoto lens. I don't use telephoto lenses. Um, I, I kind of go with the idea, I think it was uh, Robert Kappa said, if your picture's not good enough, you're not close enough. And I like street photography enough that I just want to get up close. So I rarely use um, a telephoto. And if I do use a telephoto, it's that 18 to 135. Again, that's rare. Nowadays, I'm using an Olympus OMD, a mirrorless camera, which I really like because um, I think part of that, part of carrying around a bunch of heavy cameras may have been what um, affected my back. Uh, the Olympus is a mirrorless camera, it's lightweight, it's not, it, it makes no noise basically. You can stick it in somebody's face and they're not intimidated by it. Um, and it's a really good camera. As we all know, there's some really great cameras out there. My, my Olympus has a 20 millimeter lens on it. It's a very, very good lens. Um, it's equivalent to a 40 millimeter lens because it's, uh, it's a 2x crop factor. Um, my settings, the settings that I use, and we'll go into this a little bit, but I use program mode, and aperture priority. Those are the only two, two that I use, and there's reasons behind both of those. For the ISO, I use 100. Um, the Olympus actually, the lowest ISO is 200, but I go up to 800. I usually don't go over that. 400, 800 gives me that noise and that grain and that gritty look that I really like a lot uh, for street photography. I do most of my stuff in um, black and white, but I'll talk, talk to you about that. You're gonna see a lot of color stuff too. I shoot in raw, 
um, and, um, and black and white. So in other words, I set my camera to shoot in black and white, which is a JPEG image, fine, JPEG fine, and it also shoots in RAW. So I always have the RAW image, which is the color it's image and everything like that. The reason I shoot in, Amen. the Amen. reason I show the black and white, Amen. sorry? The reason, I shoot, the reason I shoot in black and white is I kind of like want to see what it looks like. So when I go into Photoshop or Lightroom, I can get a starting point. Also with the Olympus, I can actually tweak the um, actual black and white. You can actually go into each one of the little weird settings um, and tweak them to your liking. And you'll see one of the things I like, I like this really high contrast type of look. So that's, 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 those are my settings and the modes. And I wanted to go over this really quickly. Why do I use the program mode? And we talked, um, a, a couple of people brought this up about how they can um, get quickly uh, a good depth of field or, um, or um, a speed, a particular shutter speed or something. If you set your camera to program mode and you have the wheel, one of the wheels, it's either the front wheel or the back wheel, depending on which dial, which camera you have. If you switch that wheel back and forth, in program mode, you'll notice that I can do something like this. If I want a really fast speed, I can flip that mode and I'm still in program mode. And what will happen is I'll increase the speed and you'll see the top one is 750th of a second. And it automatically um, changes, the F, changes the F or, or the aperture. Um, I can lower that to 350. If, if, you look, if you look right there, 350 is what the actual, what the camera chose. And if you look at the top and bottom, you see the S next to it, that's what I've changed. So for instance, if I want a really long depth of field, I can just flip that little spot, flip that dial, and I'll get my um, aperture that I want or the shutter speed that I want. Um, I also, as I mentioned, shoot an aperture because um, I like to get, let's say, a long aperture or something like that, a, a long depth of field. And I don't really care about the shutter speed. And I'm gonna show you a lot of stuff about motion. I love motion on the street. The other thing to take in consideration is that the shorter the focal length of the lens, the longer your depth of field, or the deeper the depth of field. That's why I like to use wide angle, you know, like a wide angle or short focal length lenses. Short focal length lenses give you a long depth of field. Um, it's probably why you can't, unless you have a special app for it, you can't get a really good um, depth of field or, or, or a shallow depth of field on a, on a smartphone. Um, tiny, tiny sensors and, um, and lenses. So to, if, you, if you're going out and doing um, this kind of thing and, you, and you're worried about your depth of field, try putting it in program mode and use that to switch back and forth and it can be done very quick, easily. I mean, look, I went from uh, 750th of a second to 45, to 40, to 1 45th of a second or whatever that is. So it works really well and then it changes your, and, and that's only that one dial, it makes it really simple. Um, so then how do I catch a scene? There's a couple of ways I catch the scene and some people have been with me and um, have tried to protect me from taxi cabs and things like that. But um, with ADD, I really like um, running around. So um, I do it two ways. I stay in place. I find something that has a great background or something that's really interesting. And I wait for something to happen. Um, I like running. So I'll run to see something. And I'll run up front. I might see something and I run to see it, to get to catch it. Or I might see somebody that really is interesting and they're going towards something that I think is an interesting background. And I might run up in front of them and wait till they get um, to, to where I want to be. Um, I also shoot with both eyes open. And I shoot with both eyes open so I can see what's coming. And I think the um, network card's dying. Pardon? Oh, yes. now we can hear you, Jim. Okay, so um, yeah. I want to talk about, um, I'm, I'm going to do some categories and I'm not really going to worry about much, but I just want to show you something really quickly. There's um, what I, I, I look at two different things in the street, especially in the United States. I'm not talking about foreign countries, the United States. There's limited access and there's unlimited access. And to me, the street is unlimited access. What's limited access is places like private schools, you know, um, major buildings, um, office buildings, condominiums, things that you really, you can't get into. You might be able to get into the first floor, but there's no way you're gonna get past the guards or whatever to go up unless you're 
a member or you live there or you pay for it or you're in the school or whatever. So um, I just wanted to show these kind of things. This one's kind of interesting, but let me comment on one thing. I'm going to show this um, program like I shoot my street. It's going to be all over the place. Um, it's going to be relatively in disorder because um, it's how I shoot. Um, I do have some parts that are put together in some sort of um, theme or, or whatever. Um, and I will, um, we'll talk about that as we go along. I was going to mention um, what, who my um, mentors were, but if you saw the photograph in the beginning of me as a little kid, my real mentor and my influence was my father. Um, you know, I didn't know who any of these other people were, like Gary Winogrand or um, Henry Cartier-Bresson, or, or nobody knew who Vivian Mayer was for, for a while, and Lee Freelander and, and Philip Lorca de, um, de Corsia. Um, and there's, then there's a lot more. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give Sandy a reading list of um, some of my favorite um, um, people. But my influences were really Life Magazine and um, National Geographic. I didn't know about all these other photographers um, or what they did. Of course, I look at them now. Um, I have a, a large library of their work to see. But it, I find it interesting that so many of us, and I've seen other, others of our group's photographs, um, they're not that much different. It's just these people became famous because they were either first doing it or they got their work out there. So um, these are some of my first um, images with, with my Nikon. Um, again, I don't think you have to show a whole person. And we're talking about stories here, what these stories tell. Um, and it, it, I, I, don't, I don't mind that something's out of focus. I have no problem with that. I love patterns. Um, and the pattern of this woman's coat and the blurriness of it. Um, the same thing here, the shadows. So these were kind of the first kind of photographs I would take when I was up in New York or something with my Nikon. And they're all black and white, of course, because I um, was, was had my own dark room in my parents' bathroom down in the basement, which they never got to use. Um, so, you know, things like this, just starting to, and not knowing anything about street photography, just doing what I thought I liked. And I think that's what everybody really should do. And we we've, we've discussed that before. What do you like to do? How do you like doing it? And of course, with street photography, sometimes you think it, you know, it's a little scary because you're going up to people, or whatever. But what I do is you try to look for some things that are really interesting. I look for this one, for instance, the balloon on the bottom right is matching that little baby's bonnet, the little bulb on the head, and then the person's silhouette in front of the smoke and all the other people. And these are just images that are just easy to do. And then the whole idea of doing things like, you know, why shoot straight ahead? Use, use reflections, use some things that you got. Um, so again, I'm gonna go through and show a variety of photographs. And some of them are, again, not gonna be in order. It's disorder because that's how I do street photography. I'm running around and doing things. And those of you who've been with me when I've taken, um, gone on these um, trips, um, doing my street photography will know that I can't stand still. Um, medication doesn't work. But anyway, um, some of the things you do, and I, I, I really you know, um, emphasize this, is always turn around. Um, no matter what you're doing, if you're standing in the street in a corner, keep turning around. This is taken in Thailand. And what we were all doing, we're all watching these elephants doing all these kind of tricks and stuff. Like one of them was actually kicking a basketball into a hoop and never missed. And everybody's watching this. My little uh, niece is having the bananas stolen, stolen from her by another elephant in back. So I turned around and saw this. And this is a, the Malut who, ride, who drives the elephants. And this is, there's a little embarrassing story behind this. This photograph, which um, won some awards and was in National Geographic and stuff like that, um, was hanging in my gallery in Easton. And a woman and a, um, or a little kid came in. And the kid was talking about the foot. And I went up and explained that Elephants' ears are so big that they guys go into their ears and um, to try to cl help clean them out and things like that. And, you know, totally joking around with, with the little kid. And, and the mother looked at me and went, really? And I was really embarrassed because I didn't want to say anything like, no, no, that's not what they do. But just the idea of here's a person and here's a human being interacting with his environment. Again, street is not just from the street. It's not just from a city. It's not just urban. Street can be anything that where a human being is impacting 
on the um, in, on their environment. So things like you know this um, this is in Chicago. You all know that. And what's interesting about this one is just waiting until this little girl. I saw her dancing around and just waiting for her to get into the right position. The other thing I want to comment on this, and I'll comment on some other um, images also, is even in even when you're shooting with um, street, you're doing really fast or and sometimes you have to do it really quickly, is you still have to worry or think about composition. And what happens though is the more photographs that you take, the easier it is to get that whole idea out of your head. You don't even think about composition anymore. You just shoot the thing. And it's very simple to do. I mean, you can work with leading lines. This is the Staten Island, getting off the Staten Island ferry. Um, you can do leading lines and, you know, wait, don't go with everybody else, hold back a little bit and see what happens where, where everybody else is going until the people on the boat say, okay, now you got to get off. Um, um, point of view, looking down at something, um, using triangles, you know, getting all those compositional ideas together. This is a guy down at the bottom who's a scalper. Um, this was in Nashville, so he was scalping for the um, Tennessee Titans. But um, using the shadows and the buildings as, the, as a point, as a leading line to point down to this guy. So, and it's really easy to do. What happens is the more you take photographs, Gary Winogrand and Vivian Mayer and some of these took hundreds of thousands of photographs. I probably have taken 100,000 photographs. Um, here's just an example of, 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 of using a different type of um, point of view. This is the wet market in Singapore. And everybody that I was with was standing in front of this counter, taking pictures behind the counter and things like that. And I noticed the balcony above the, um, this wet market. And all I did is I, nobody stopped me. There was, it was okay to go up there. There was other things going on. So I went up the balcony and took this picture, which is completely different from any, you know, nobody else had something like this. But you always, when you're doing this kind of thing with people, you have to be thinking about how can you do it different than somebody else? I like black and white, so I just wanted to show you the difference between the color and black and white. I'm going to go into that also about color and black and white. If you look at something like this, again, we're talking about leading lines and what's going on. If you notice, the real, um, in, the real um, subject of this image is not the guy sleeping, which a um, judge at the Baltimore Camera Club was really indignant about. He says, how can you take a picture of a guy who's sleeping? Did you ask him if you could take his picture? And of course, my answer was no, he was sleeping. But he's not really the subject. The subject is the guy in the corner who's reading. So it's, again, how to use leading lines, really simple stuff. Um, this one is, um, I turned it black and white, but I kept the monk's uh, orange um, robes. And again, using leading lines. And again, it becomes really intuitive and it becomes um, just built in if you take a lot of photographs. Um, this one, um, just in, uh, one of the examples that you can do is this is a multiple shot. I don't use a burst mode, by the way. I will shoot um, um, it, it, as quickly as I can if I have to do something quickly, but I'd rather not do a burst mode. And I'd rather not the camera do stuff for me. I want to do things. I want the camera to work for me. I don't want, the, um, I don't want, I want, I want, I want the camera to work for me. Um, I'm the boss of the thing. This guy was just standing there. And stock still on his phone, and you can see all these other people walking around, and you know taking taking multiple photographs, and you can get this um, whatever. And I actually call this picture bored, bored dad. Um, fun things like this. I mean, it may seem like it's a really uh, it doesn't make any sense, but it's just on a, on the I think it's the Staten Island ferry, and I just love this idea of this woman putting on her makeup, um, you know, while riding on the ferry, and. You have to look closely because it's a green chair, but um, then if you look and you look at the corners and that, you know, whatever you find that. Um, some photographs work in black and white, a lot of them do, some don't. So here's an example of one of the things I was doing. I found this mural and I stood there for quite a long time. Um, as a matter of fact, several of my friends who were with me were yeah, long since walked up a couple of blocks. But I knew something was coming and there were people walking back and forth. And I saw this woman walking up with the dog and I thought this would be a really good picture. However, it does not work in black and white. So here's the color version. And what was neat about it is as she was walking by, 
the dog following her, I, I, if you look at the dog, the dog really makes the photograph. The colors do too, her red shirt, the, the, red, the, the red devils, but that dog who's looking at those, those devils in, it looks kind of scared, but I thought the dog was, was what, made the, what made that image. But if you look again, the black and white doesn't really work. And you'll see that with a, lot of, with a lot of street photographs, sometimes it doesn't work in black and white, so you have to go to clock the color. Since I shoot in color all the time, um, now that I'm digital, I always have raw, I always have a color version that I can make into black and white if I want to. Here's another example of just finding something and taking a whole lot of photographs of it until something pops up. There's no story here. There's really no story here. There's no story here. It's just the monument. It's, it's, it's geometrical shapes and, you know, whatever, and some really interesting things. It's kind of cool. Okay, big deal. But then there's the shot. With both eyes open, I saw this guy with the blue jacket walking towards me, and I backed up a little bit, got down. This is a really huge sculpture in New York. I'm sure many of you have seen it. And seeing this little blue man with the big red thing, um, and you know, using that as an idea of perspective, but just waiting when um, other people were finished and left, and I saw this guy coming again because I had both eyes open. It only works in color. It does not work in black and white. Another um, instance of just standing somewhere and taking photographs. I saw this sign on this, this you know, moving sign um, on, the, on the side of a building on, on Macy's and I um, and the Empire State Building. And I took that and then I saw these crowds of people. So I basically held my camera up and just started shooting pictures of um, people walking by and the sign changing, constantly changing. And just some really neat stuff. And again, it's one of those things I like to do. It's just standing there and getting people to do, you know, interesting things and watching. I love that guy's face, you know, obviously in a hurry. And this woman too is kind of looking at me, I, I think. Um, and using things like framing, and I'm still using the guideline of thirds, and, 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 and you know, she's framed within all those different people. And then here's one that I saw, and I, work, I really worked this. I, worked, I walked around, they did all kinds of stuff, and I really thought it would be some interesting work, and I found nothing. And so here, this, that, this was an example of something I saw, thought I could get something, and I couldn't find a story in it. So I just kind of left it alone. And, um, you know, it, it, there might be a story in it, maybe if I cropped it differently, but that wasn't really the point. I try, and that, I have to say, I try not to crop. I try to do everything in the camera. Um, one of the other things I'm really interested in, in in street photography is motion because people are moving. And using motion um, and blur, uh, handheld cameras, um, slow shutter speeds, and I just love that curly burly, the rushing. That's not one, sorry. Um, and let me get, let me go further on. Oh, this one was really funny. I was just looking up, and you know when you look up, everybody starts looking up. So that's that's that guy looking up. So let me just go back here for a second. That's not there anymore, and that's a false point. Um, I'll go back to motion in a minute. Um, here's another interesting one. These were policemen. These were two policemen in Nashville. And um, this is the photograph that would normally be, normally be taken. But then when I turned around, I realized that the city of Nashville was behind him. And I actually asked these guys if they could go behind and uh, you know, go on the other side of the bridge, which they uh, did nicely. And you could take a picture of um, Nashville with the uh, Batman building on the upper left-hand corner. So the idea of this being, OK, interesting photograph. It's neat, two cops, they're really nice guys. Um, they were, they were very nice men. And then looking behind me and seeing the city, saying, "Let's put the cops, you know, in the city, in, you know, in front of the city." Um, Irv, if you're watching, um, this is a great way to get um, um, a depth, a, a point of view. This would be a worm's eye view looking up. This is the ugliest dog I ever saw in my life. Um, this is the dog. It had a sty, so it was like it's really ugly dog. Um, again, just really, you know, normal photograph of. Um, of Nashville, um, Baltimore City. I'm going to go through these quickly. I love doing this kind of thing, where you have a large building, so I was standing in front of the building, and watching people walk by until the right person walked by. Um, we can talk about post-processing at some other time, but um, 
that's not what this is about. Um, it works in black and white. So there's the color with the green and the red showing really nicely, but it also works in black and white fine. So I really like this kind of idea with the um, single tiny person in this big, huge city. Um, th this is Irv pretending he's drunk, but um, um, fin art's not there anymore. But um, I just really, the, the using the shadows um, to point to the people that are standing there with the little baby and the baby carriage on to the left-hand side. Again, the idea of the small human being interacting with the big city. Same thing, I really love this variety on Broadway. And I stood across the street and just watched people go by. And when this woman came by with these two huge dogs, it was, it, to me, it made the photograph, as did the, um, the fire escapes. Um, Elvis lives. Um, this was really interesting because this was put in a competition in the Baltimore Camera Club, and, and the uh, judge said it should be cropped just to show Elvis. I think he was really, really, really wrong. Um, the other thing on street photography, again, as I mentioned, it does not have to show people. Here's where we have the motion. This is the motion part. So um, I really like motion and the idea of motion, again, but using the, the, the guidelines of composition, um, the guideline of third, the leading lines. Um, you know, I left it white in the background and didn't put it in a sky because it's as if she was running towards oblivion or something. I mean, you can come up with your own story, whatever you want to do, it's okay. Um, this was a project I did, it was a commission by a band uh, playing at Bertha's muscle, Muscles. They're a jazz band. And one of the things I do is I love jazz. And um, uh, by the way, street can be indoors as we talked, as we heard a couple weeks ago. Um, I love jazz, but to me, jazz is a kinetic form of music and it's, you, it's a movement, you're, you're really moving. So when you take a picture like this, it looks just like they're posed. And so what you do is you slow down the shutter speed and you start blurring things out and you still can see that it's a piano player, but now they're pretty blurred and you do all these different things with this. So here's the guy playing the drums. It's, he's just, is he really playing the drums or he's just posed? So then you speed it up a little bit, maybe speed it up a little bit more and you start doing this kind of thing. Now we're talking jazz. Now we're talking kinetic energy. We're talking movement. We're talking, you know, all this kind of stuff. Here's the, Here's the saxophone player, uh, Russell, um, great sax player. He actually plays it, um, the, um, at um, the BMA also at birth at um, Gertrude's, or did. But so here he is, okay, great, nice picture, um, not moving, maybe he's just posing. We have no idea if he's playing, um, but now we know that he's moving and playing and doing his thing. We can still kind of recognize him a little bit. Um, this is, a, a, um, he's actually, this guy is actually a, um, at Towson University. He's one of the professors, um, a, the jazz professor. But again, um, could be just posing um, for me, uh, just quietly. But now you can still recognize him, but I've slowed the shutter speed down. And again, one way of slowing the shutter speed down is to use program mode and just flip it until you get that slower shutter speed. And what happens, you get this, you can put it into what's a CD cover for an album. Um, and the name of the band was, the, uh, was Kinetic, Kinetic Sound. So um, it works. Um, so here's another idea of how to use uh, motion. Um, this guy was just sitting there um, in Fells Point playing Stairway to Heaven. I think it's the only tune he kno knew because after he came out from getting pizza um, behind, he was still playing the same tune. But it's really boring. It doesn't tell a story. It doesn't say anything. But then what I did is I sat down on the ground in a different position. Why is it, it's not coming, hold on one second. Oh, I'll have to come up with that one in, in a minute. Sorry guys. Um, I'll come back to that one in a minute. It, it's later on. Um, this one is um, how I do um, panoramas pa or panos, panning, panning shots. And so I found the background again, that was a great background. I liked it. I saw this guy coming up. I actually ran in front of him to get the photograph as he walked by and he kind of looked at me like I was crazy because yeah, okay, I am. So then he's just pushing this thing around and I finally came up with this image. I, this is the one I like the best. 
and use that. And again, I like the color. It doesn't work as well in black and white because the background is really dark and then black and white just didn't work. Same thing here. If you can read the signs, the sign says no stopping, you know, no parking, and having these people just, you know, frozen doesn't really work. So again, quickly using the program mode to change the shutter speed, you get the blur. Now it still says um, no standing any time, but now they're blurred and they're walking. So it works, it works really well with the sign. So I look at signs and things, I like that kind of thing. So then here's one that's in the, in the museum in Chicago um, and just blurring. The person on the left is a friend of mine. I asked her to stand still as everybody else is moving, which um, emulated the, um, the um, painting in the middle. So I, you know, again, you're looking for stuff that works really well. Um, I like, love taking pictures through windows. Um, I was faster than Arthur. I got the picture before he did but um, he's looking out at me. Um, I love windows because I love the reflections that it gives you. Um, it, 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 it gives you some really interesting ideas. You can be reflected in it, which is okay. Uh, things across the street can be reflected in it. And the other nice thing about shooting through windows is that you can run a lot faster away than they can get, get up and come through the door and come after you. So um, it makes it a lot easier to um, stay safe. But I've never really had any problems with um, street photography. Um, this is again, looking through, um, it was about five degrees below, 15 degrees below zero in the canyons. Um, that's Steve Oney, some of you know him. Um, this girl was really nice. She didn't like, she did, she, at first she wasn't taking a picture, but we, we were talking to her. She was really, really cool. Um, and then I do some weird things, and these things were done with um, a cell phone. And this is why we were waiting for a um, bolt bus um, late in the evening, and um, just sitting there inside this, um, I think it was a Dunkin' Donuts or something, and just taking photographs. It started to rain, and people are running by and running, running, running their hot dog stands um, under, undercover. And you know, these, this kind of thing was really, to me, just really interesting. I, I just like this kind of motion and commo commotion, which works really well. And these were done again with um, a cell phone. Um, I didn't mention that earlier, but I do, I have used the cell phone before. And then again, the other thing about, I just, I just like the idea of motion, people moving, interesting people. Um, here's one that, that I liked a lot. This, this was the same, this is the same guy, of course, but in, um, in the first first picture, I was really close, and I liked him walking by. And then when I came back, I saw this other guy walking by. This photograph does not work. It doesn't work at all. But this one does, in my opinion. Um, I, I just like this. It was a Hasidic Jew who had the long beard and, and everything like that. He was um, walking really quickly. So you got that flowing beard and everything that works. Um, and in this picture, it really just doesn't work very well. Um, this is another idea. When I saw this, I said, um, let's see what, what we have here. And looking, looking around, there were these construction workers. And I took a whole bunch of photographs of these different construction workers. If you notice the guy in the blue, he's moving in different, different places. And ended up with the one that I liked was the one where he was in framed by the construction piece of equipment. And so the idea again is, and then of course, this one also works in color and it worked in black and white too, but the colors were so vibrant. It's again, the idea of some, some street photographs work really well in color. Um, this is a multiple shot, but um, it just again, to like show you what's going on, what you can do with, with, with shots. So this is a, a multiple shot taken many times and then taking it into um, Photoshop and cleaning it up and just picking out what I want. So for instance, if you look at the, um, don't walk, walk sign. I actually picked both of the ones that came out. Um, I picked the pictures on the right and left, one, what I wanted to pick. I chose the, um, the two couples standing in the middle. Um, so you can do things like that too. So in other words, these are layers and I would eliminate certain parts of the different layers to get that um, effect. Um, one of the things that I did and I'll show you a couple more again, they're scattered all over the place, is you always have somebody walking in front of you. And I did a thing where I said, you know, this really is horrible, I hate this. But then I looked at the idea and I said, you know, if you have enough of these, you know, one time is a mistake, 
And if you have like 20 or more, something like this, it becomes a style. So it's kind of a style with people, you know, riding in front of you and blocking your view, things like that. And it can be really interesting in doing something, um, something um, interesting. And again, using reflections from, from a bus. Um, in, inside, again, we can go inside. This is a bar down in, downtown. And the neat thing about this one, what I really like about this photograph is this, so there's some person walking in front of me. But if you notice what that person does, what, the, what that, that blur does, is it really emphasizes and highlights the person, the guy sitting at the bar. So it's using that blur as a frame to frame what I want to show, which is that, that guy sitting at the bar and the person behind them. So again, just sitting on a bar stool, listening to a band, playing, you know, and, and watching people walk by. Um, Karen Messick did this on purpose, but I still like the way she did that. Um, again, it's this her whole idea of blur and people getting in your way, and it can work. If you do a lot of it, it becomes a style, I think. Um, I also did a, um, a, a, a project, um, it's called Two Faces of Affair. And basically what I wanted to show was how um, fairs or carnivals can be um, really fun, but there's also like this backside to them that's not really great. So, you know, here's this guy paying, buying the tickets and the little kids running to, to get to it. This is the entrance and all that sort of thing. Um, this is the Maryland State Fair. So um, we, it, it's just, yeah. or no, this might be the Howard, Howard County Fair. I forgot which one it was. But the idea is, you know, um, no, it's the Maryland, Maryland State Fair. So, you know, giving an idea, you know, starting out the story with directions and showing what's going on. I like the idea that they have the grandstand, the light rail, stock buildings, and then the no parking sign. Um, always an ATM. You're going to have to go get your money to get into these fairs. Um, they're different fairs. I find this a really sad image. Um, this little girl went on this little ride by herself. Her parents, I don't know where her parents were. That's um, the guy that runs the, um, that's the carny who, who runs that. But she was having a great time. So she's smiling and everything like that. Um, I have no idea where her parents were. And um, mom and dad can ride here. And that's the signs that say that. And there's no, there are no mom and dad. Um, I, I like, the other thing is looking at people and how they're reacting and how, what they're doing. And this girl was, looked so sad. She was on her cell phone, and um, every kid is on their cell phone. But kids, you know, prize every time, and she's on her phone. Um, again, the idea of framing. So here, this guy, this carny, or the guy is being framed. But if you also look to the right, you see through the blur the kid walking towards um, and looking around and seeing what's going on. So as we were talking about um, shooting through flowers. Here's an example of just shooting through um, a whole bunch of other things. Um, these are like the toys and the giveaways. Excuse me. And then, um, of course, um, things like this. I mean, here's the machine gun and the guy carrying a little kid around. You know, all these things with these, the, the, the big toys, the, um, the, the cartoon characters. Um, the large carny guy, which I think is really interesting, and it's the, it's the machine gun thing. Um, again, this is like, I, I just love the idea of what happens at carnivals and people are getting tired and the kids are being carried by their parents. Um, this one is, uh, was at the Howard County Fair. And one of the ways it did this one is using a slow shutter speed, the camera was on a tripod, but I had a flash that was not connected to the camera. And by using the flash and flashing, flash obviously freezes motion. So if you look at the guy that's the closest to us on the upper right-hand corner, he's frozen. But if you look behind him, all those people are ghosted because the flash doesn't, the light didn't go that far, so they're still in motion. So that's one way of, of combining um, um, emotion and, 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 and uh, frozen motion. And I just like, these kind of things, like she's like so bored. I mean, waiting for the carousel to come around, um, just totally bored. I'd love to watch these people doing things. This one's really interesting. If you look really closely, in some of my photographs, you have to look really closely. The women are laughing and smiling and having a great time. If you look at the guy, he is, look, he looks petrified. This is that ride where you go up really high and then it drops. Um, 
it's just, I just thought it was so funny to watch these girls really laughing and having a great time. And this guy was absolutely petrified. So you look closely and see what's going on. Um, this is another ride with the people up in the right-hand corner, um, sort of frozen. Um, this was the ride in the upper left-hand corner, bunch of people sitting there, you know, looking, doing their thing. Um, I will not show this picture to these guys. Um, I'm afraid they would beat the crap out of me. Um, but I thought it was really perfect with the pit beef. I mean, these guys are really beefy. They're, they're really cool. I actually talked to them a little bit and they were actually really cool guys. And things like this, again, using um, framing, using people walking in front. It's got no parking, fire lane. And there's this guy sitting there on the phone. And the people walk, because the people are walking towards the left, you tend to look that way. And because you look that way, you see that guy. The other thing that's really important is our, our eye tends to look at things that are in focus. So even though the person in the front, in the foreground, is um, really prominent right there, our eye goes to something that is sharp and focused. Um, and that happens, um, that's a, a really interesting optical observation. If you think about that, you can take pictures of something and the, the subject is the guy on the bench. Um, this one I thought was really um, ironic. If you look at him, um, the, the name of the ride is the Himalaya. Obviously, the tallest mountain in the world, um, even though it competes with K2 once in a while. But he's in a wheelchair. He's not going up that mountain. And then I like the woman on the right who's wearing that shirt with the whale on it. And um, she's a kind of a large woman. And I just thought that was just that, that's the kind of thing I like to look for. It tells a really interesting story. Um, it can be either humorous or you can look at it as being, you know, kind of a sad story or ironic. But it's just, again, it's a story. Um, this kid made it all the way to the top. Um, using using um, silhouette is great. I don't mind having silhouette. It doesn't have to be a perfect silhouette. Um, we've talked about this in some other um, things, other um, meetings that we've had, some people talking about what's a silhouette, what's not. But I don't think it has to be a real a great, a amazing silhouette. But I think what makes this photograph is the kid with his arms outstretched. And again, it gives you a really interesting story. Um, you always have to get a crowd scene in a, in a fair and um, it's crazy. And what's amazing about this one now is gosh, we don't see this. Or let's put it this way, we shouldn't see this. But all these people are just really interesting. It's, and it's a lot of people. Um, again, you're just looking for people, see what they're doing. This girl was just sitting there making faces and taking selfies while her friends were on this particular ride. And all she was doing, she didn't notice me at all. And I'm just standing right there in front of her while she's making all these faces in herself, in her phone and the selfie, which I thought was just really, just, just really kind of funny. Um, the people who work there, you know, they are really working hard. And I think they've got a horrible job. And usually it's really hot and it's really, um, they don't get paid a lot. And it's usually, like I said, it's really hot. They're doing things, there's lines, um, and it's really neat. But this is a neat picture. It works, it's okay. But this one I think is really interesting. If you look really closely, right in the middle under the fresh cut cheese fries, you see the guy's head, the guy who's working there, who's, who's doing the lemonade and squeezing the lemons. And I purposely did that. You know, if I stood up a little higher, you could get his, his whole face. I didn't really want his whole face. So I, you know, lowering yourself down a little bit to get the, um, the guys, just the top of the guy's head. So it's really subtle to look at. And there's other things in there that are subtle too. The coffee, um, the, the, the lemons, the, um, the, the, the uh, thing at the top, the awning at the top. And then as it gets later at night, um, I, I really like night, night photography. Um, I have a whole section on night photography, but I'm not going to do that whole thing here today. And then um, it's, it's, again, it's one of these things for little kids and stuff. It can be really a spooky place at night. So I just thought this was a really interesting photograph of the father kind of comforting this little kid. He was, the kid, little kid was crying. Um, and you got the snow cones in the back. You got the shakes. You got the drinks. You got all this great stuff but the kid is still kind of nervous and scared of being there. Um, this photograph, I, um, some, uh, I, I liked a lot. 
you got this young young guy who's smiling and laughing, he loves what's doing, what's going on. And then the guy who's sitting there, you know, it's it's kind of like he must have been doing this for years and just getting really bored, or I don't know what it is, but his, you know, his whole demeanor is like, I don't want to be here. Whereas the other guy is all excited, he's happy, he's running, he's playing, he's yelling out, calling people to come and play. As it gets to night, I, again, I like this, the idea of using light as a silhouette, but also as a surrounding in the other areas. You can see all the people, what they're doing, what they're waiting for. You can see the workers. Same thing here. So then this is just a typical wheel. It's okay. With, you know, no big deal. Um, this is a little scarier. Um, it was pretty interesting catching these at the front. There's a lot of photo. You take a lot of photographs to get it in the right way, in the right clouds. Um, there it is. In the, there's the carousel in the background. There's the guy um, at the bottom right hand corner. If you look closely, it's the guy at the bottom right hand corner. And you can see the little kid right in between the, um, the fence posts. And I actually saw the little kid and moved to the left a little bit so that I could catch him with the father pointing at the carousel and things that were going on. And then, of course, I got on the carousel. Um, I thought this was really interesting. I don't think you're going to see that flag that's in the middle um, much more anymore. But I love the idea of, of SpongeBob SquarePants on the right-hand side, um, the aliens on the left-hand side, and the flag, um, the um, interesting flag right in the middle. Again, I love taking pictures through windows. Here's a photograph that does not work. And the reason it does not work, it's, 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 it's very, um, you know, it might be a very selfish photograph. It might, people might be turned off by it. Um, this, um, but it doesn't work because I can't, couldn't get rid of that post that's blocking the woman on the right. And even in Photoshop, when, when I use um, ways to get rid of it, it was okay, but it didn't work. And so this photograph does not work, but it would have been really neat. I couldn't catch them um, quick enough. The, the, this, I took many photographs of this one and um, actually talked to the guy up on the steps um, about what was going on, it was a mission. And what makes this photograph though is, is it, the one the reason I picked this one is the guy looking at me, the older man looking across the street and waiting um, for, his, for the groceries, it's a gross, picking up the groceries. Um, here's another example of what works and what doesn't. Okay, so this guy's doing a little break dance, people are got, gathered around, and it's like, it's okay, it's, it's not, um, it's okay, it's not a great photograph, whatever, but then um, I saw this one, and if you look at this one, it's really different. And I'm wondering how many of you really see what the subject of this photograph is. And I can tell you right now, it's not the guy dancing. And I know some people picked it out. I know Sandy picked it out right away. If you look in the background, it's that guy with his mouth open. And his whole, the whole idea of how amazed he is at what this kid is doing um, in, um, in this break dancing. The other thing, of course, you can always say that, yeah, you know, it's like a decisive moment like Cartier-Bresson would talk about where the guy's feet are off the ground. But it, the, real, the real subject of this photograph was the guy in the background. And I actually watched him opening his mouth and, and waited and he kept his mouth open, which was a good thing because then this guy came flipping in and it worked really well. Um, this could be really confusing. Um, if anybody knows about Rodchenko, he did a lot of photographs of very weird angles from um, looking down uh, bird's eye views. Um, this is not two photographs. It's one photograph. It's taken from the museum, and I'm going to sniff a little bit because the mu museum was great, but it's now closed. Um, evidently, it was mismanaged. Um, I, that's, I, Sandy told me that that was part of the reason it closed. What a phenomenal museum, but you could sta stand out on their huge balcony right next to the Canadian Embassy and look down and take this photograph. The line, it's a, it's a, it's a crosswalk. It's a huge crosswalk. And the line going right down the middle, even though the rules, and I don't like rules, but the guideline says you should never put anything down the middle. Because they're two so separate things, you know, the, 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 the light and the, the, the road coming to that stop and the people walking across, 
and the shadows, it works. To, for me, it works. It may not work for everybody, but for me, it works. The other thing I like to do is um, portraits. And um, I think portraits can be street photography. Some people will disagree with me. Um, I think that's not true. I think you can do portraits. Here's the caveat. If you ask somebody to pose for you, and this is in Maryland and most of the United States, because of the First Amendment, if you ask, or because of the First Amendment, you could take pictures of just about anybody and not worry about it. However, if you ask somebody to pose for you, they become a model, and you really should have a model release. And there's several types of model release. You can have a paper model release, just print off a bunch of them, put them in your kit. But you can also download some to put in your iPod or on your cell phone or your smartphone, and you can actually have them sign that, and you can email it to them right away. This guy, Luke, and his dog, Boss Hog, where he, he, he's not homeless, he's a hobo. He's completely off the grid. He's a really cool guy. Um, um, I met him and asked him to stand next to this um, wall. The wall is at the stadium for the um, Tennessee um, Titans, their, their stadium. And um, he jumps trains, he does all kinds of stuff. His dog did that. And he was on his way to Europe to, um, to, to ride the trains there. And what's really interesting about this guy is we've kept in touch quite a bit. I haven't heard from him for like a year or so, but we kept in touch for a long time because every time he would go to a library, he'd get online and email me and I'd email him back. Of course, I sent him his photograph. Um, you don't have to go to Peru to get um, this really cool guy. He was a really nice man. He didn't speak any English, but he had an interpreter there. This was at, at Cityscape and I'm um, taking the picture. And yes, I got um, his signature. Through, um, through the interpreter. And I also, just to make it really real, I had the interpreter also, it was, she was a, the sponsor for the a booth also, and I had her sign it also. Um, this, this is another um, um, photograph. This happens to be my son, so um, unless he disowns me or something, I'm not worried too much about um, uh, getting a, a model release from him. But again, model releases are really important. You'd be surprised at the issues that have come about, including spouses. If you take pictures of your spouse and there's a really nasty divorce and your spouse says, you never paid me for those pictures, um, there have been court cases and the spouse has won. Um, one of the saddest pictures that I ever took, I think, this is the Soviet Union when it was still the Soviet Union. Um, and they had these like little girls with these little pom-poms with these, you know, rifles and stuff marching and, and, and doing all kinds of really crazy things. It was really, really weird. Um, here's the, this is the, when I first saw this guy, um, Luke, this is still Luke, and this is the next picture. So there's the picture I saw at first and walked up to him and talked to him. And he was really nice. He was really actually he was a great guitarist. I said, you're really a good guitarist. He said, no, I just learned how to play. I'm a really, I'm a good banjo player. Um, then you do things, one of the reasons I like that 12 to 24 um, wide angle lens, uh, zoom lens is, and, and interestingly enough, I didn't notice this at first. When I took the picture of these guys um, who had been shoveling snow in this church, I did not notice two people. The one person, the homeless guy in the, on the top step on the right, and then in the left-hand side through the doors, a guy looking through the door. And I always thought that was really interesting. I didn't even notice this guy until I took this, um, until I pr printed this photograph or started working on the photograph. And I put together a project called The Human Imperceptible. And this project was um, something that I wanted to do after actually seeing this photograph and looking at all these people ignoring what's going on around them. So it's not really photographs of the person who's either lonely or homeless or by themselves or whatever. It's all the people who are walking around who basically, you know, these people are basically invisible. And here's this guy in a wheelchair who's pulling himself along with his feet. And these two women are just talking and gabbing and talking, not moving at all, because this guy is basically imperceptible. He's not really invisible, but he's not really there. And this was done during a time when, um, when we were, when most people were getting really sick and tired of the beggars and um, homeless people, things like that, and I wanted to kind of bring back the idea of, hey, it's not them, it's us, the people, you know, we ignore things. So here's um, an, an image that um, one of my, this, uh, this guy named Steve was a former president of the Baltimore Camera Club, we were up in New York, 
it, we saw this guy and took the picture, but this is not the photograph I wanted. I don't want a picture of the guy who's homeless or laying there. What I want is I want to see a picture of what's going on around him. And so taking the picture, all the people smiling, laughing, having a good time, basically ignoring the guy. And what I noticed after I took the photograph was the, it was the name on the magazine, on the newspaper. And if you can read it upside down, it says terror outrage. I just thought that was so perfect for this, you know, for this idea. And the fact that his, his, um, his um, knapsack is right in the middle, that's basically everything he owns. But I put that right in the middle on purpose. Um, I also like the bird on the left-hand side. And here it is in black and white. And I, I really like the black and white one too. And I, again, I'll shoot in color and then convert it to black and white. Um, here's another example of, um, again, really boring image. And then when you, come, when you come back out and you do this, it does sort of work in black and white, but if you do it in color, it works a little bit better. Seeing this Lamborghini or whatever that fancy car was, um, it was driving by, these women with their high heels are walking in towards a, a nightclub. The guy's out there um, you know, playing his guitar. And what's interesting about this, if you look at their feet, the women's feet, their, their, their shoes and their feet are stuck still, whereas they're really blurred. And it's the way people walk. So when you walk, you plant one foot and it's planted for a second or so. And as the next foot moves and the body moves. So their body's moving and then one leg is moving, but one foot is always planted. So if you can pick the shutter speed properly, and again, if you use the P mode, the program mode, you can flip it really quickly and get the right kind of, um, of um, shutter speed, you can get this kind of effect. And I thought this effect was really interesting. So here's this guy who's, um, you know, his, um, his electronics are attached to a, 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 a car battery. You got the Lamborghini, you got the other people um, with the high heels walking into the um, bar or whatever. So it's interesting. Again, the idea of people just walking by. Um, I thought this was an interesting picture. Um, this guy um, was just sitting there by himself. But if you read the sign, um, it says, before disaster turns your world upside down, be ready. And what's interesting about this is, I'm in the photograph, uh, in the reflection. I don't mind that, I don't care. Um, I'm shooting the photograph, it's, it's my photograph and I'm in it. I, I, do, I do a lot of photographs where my shadow is in the picture um, and I, I kind of like that. Um, again, the idea of using leading lines to show what I want to show. So the shadow of the trash can leads you up to this guy who's laying on, this is right, right down in, in Fells Point. Um, I like to shoot from the hip. Um, this is obviously a shot from the hip. This guy was not standing very steadily. He needed the wall to walk. Um, sitting on, just again, I was just sitting on a stoop watching people going by. And this guy had like, I guess it was all his possessions on this wheelchair and he was kind of rushing by. And again, I like the idea of the motion and what's going on with that. Uh, again, here's, Here's the idea of someone's impact or communi communication with the street. I had no idea where this person was. I had no, there was nobody around. It was just these shoes laying there. And to me, that was just, just really weird. Um, and then there's, here's this woman here who's laying there. And this is very voyeuristic, I think. And it didn't tell the story that I wanted to tell. It did not tell the story I wanted to tell. It was just really sad. The story I wanted to tell was the fact that she was just being ignored by everyone. Um, I did find a policeman around the corner and told the cop um, about this woman laying there. And it was interesting, I guess it's New York, the cop didn't seem concerned at all. I'm sure he sees it every single day, um, but he did call it in and um, I, did, I did say something. But if you look, this is an interesting photograph, but it doesn't tell the right story. I think it's cruel. But I think what, this is what I really wanted to show is that these people are just walking by her and you know, just completely in a way ignoring her. He wasn't actually looking at her, he was looking at the newspapers. Um, this guy was um, really cool. He was a, a vet, this is in Chicago. He's a disabled, he's a, a veteran, a crack addict. And he was singing the gospel and he was really good. And 
and my son and I walked by and I dropped five bucks in his in his pocket. And he said, hey, you know, stop. Why don't, you know, let's, you know, you, what, what's going on? And, you know, he was grateful that we gave him some money and stuff. And my son goes, oh, he's, you know, he whispers to me, he's a crack addict because my son works with these people. And um, I asked the guy if I could take his picture. And he was like, sure. Um, he's blurred because he would not stop moving. And it was, you know, I didn't have a fast enough, I didn't have a fast enough shutter speed because I just wanted to get a portrait of him. Um, this is one of my favorite photographs. It's also really old. If you look at the sign up in the left, left it's Maryland National Bank. And as many of you know, Maryland National Bank no longer exists. But why do you have to show the whole guy? Why do you have to show the whole person? We know that this guy's obviously begging or maybe he's homeless or whatever. He's got his tin, he's got his tin cup. He's got his ragged pants and shoes. He's got his stick next to him. But you don't have to show the whole thing, but it tells a story, a really good story, I think. And then, of course, something like this tells a really great story. Please help. God bless. Um, obviously, somebody dropped this, and it was laying in the street. Um, and then I, I also like these kind of things. So post no mercy. Um, Jesus loves you. That kind of stuff. Um, um, this was a church. Um, and just an, an interesting night shot with this guy who's um, a homeless guy walking past the church. Poor John Lennon. Um, I did a whole series on the um, Amish, and, and I did this. Um, this was at one of the mud uh, mud sales. And the, if you look at my, I think I have it on my Facebook. Um, I took a lot of pictures of these guys, but I did not take the. I tried very hard not to take pictures of their faces, and I got really um, upset about this because so many people were like right up in their faces, taking pictures of them. And um, I went one time and I um, haven't gone back because I, I felt very uncomfortable. Um, this is another, another image where I found something I really thought was fascinating, the church across the street from where um, the little store was my son went into. And I watched a whole bunch of people walk by. And um, I couldn't move over to the left a little bit because there were cars in the way, parked cars. Um, so I'm, I'm on the right-hand side a little bit. And, um, and taking all these pictures and nothing interesting to me, but because I had both eyes open, I see this guy walking up and he's got his burden on his back. So this photograph, I actually called it the burdens, plural. Um, I also did it on purpose so that it's very high contrast and um, the, the, the Christ is very white and looking down. But I waited until that guy got right in, in the center of those um, 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 doorways. Um, and then there's like all the stuff you can do with politics. Um, you know, this was um, um, Howard Street. Um, this was during the Wall Street, um, the, the war on Wall Street. And um, they were going to take over the Howard Street Bridge. And this was when I was at MICA. And they were going to block the Howard Street Bridge and this big protest. And um, there were about 20 people showed up. And most of the speakers talked about how they were members of a union and how long they'd been a member of the union. And it was really um, kind of boring. I, I did a whole um, project on this also with sound and, and everything. But there's always some good stuff you can take. I mean, you know, if you all remember this. Um, one of the things I find really interesting, this is in Moscow. And here's these um, Ukrainian Catholic, um, they're on a hunger strike and they're um, protesting. But do you notice that the signs in English, um, because this is the Arbat Street where it's very touristy, there's all kinds of tourists, American tourists. This is when the Soviet Union was just opening up, was the first parliament elect parliamentary elections they were having, which was actually kind of fascinating while we were there. But I just thought it was interesting that here are these people, um, the Ukrainian Catholic, it was 1989 repression. Actually, this was taken a little bit after that, but this they had the 1989 sign up. But, it's in English, which I thought was just really amazing. And then I like this kind of stuff too. The idea that here's this bus going by, the New York City bus, the flag is, is pointing in an interesting direction. Um, and then there's tape to the wall is, um, it's, an apart, it's a, asking for an apartment, um, um, somebody uh, to help live in an apartment or whatever, but it's in a language and I have no idea what the language is. Somebody might be able to tell me what it is, but I just thought it was an interesting, juxtaposition of the American flag, New York City bus, and um, the foreign language to show how 
our, our, our country is such a great melting pot. We have so much interesting things going on. Um, we sell English books. It's, you know, really cool stuff. This was done in, um, in, um, in um, I'm sorry, in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, um, right downtown in Birmingham, Alabama, where the churches, where the um, uh, four little girls were killed, is a, um, a artist did a gauntlet. Um, all these bronze statues, you can actually walk around the gauntlet. There's one where dogs are attacking you, all this kind of stuff. And I saw this little girl and this little boy standing here in front of the um, bronze statue that was about the, the children's march and the children's arrest. They arrested all these little kids. And it said, um, and the whole thing is, uh, we're not afraid. And when she turned around and looked at me, it was just like, how can you not take this picture? And moving quickly to the left a little bit so that I could get her and the kids in the and the bronzes between the um, railings the, between the poles was really interesting. Um, you could call this a Black Lives Matter thing. It's not. It was just a couple sitting there looking at a map and um, figuring where they were going to go next. But I just thought it was neat um, under the flag, and I kept the flag uh, color. Again, I don't think you need to show people. Um, this is in Chinatown in um, Chicago, and it's just on a, um, um, a telephone pole. And it's all these different um, prayer things and uh, other information and you know, all kinds of numbers and lottery numbers and all kinds of things taped. And I just thought it was just an interesting photograph, just looking at all the stuff that people do. Um, this is the same thing. This was in Singapore and just a wall full of graffiti and, and torn papers and, and whatever. And I, again, it's showing human impact um, in, in, in what's going on. I'm gonna go a little faster because I know it's after nine. Um, humor, let's do humor really quick. Where will you sleep tonight? Um, love that one. Uh, there's the American Stock Exchange. Um, there's um, Stay Sexy with Steve Oney. Um, I really like this one, good, really nice juxtaposition. She's like looking at this woman, the, doll, the dollhouse woman, and um, it's kind of interesting. Um, so I'm going a little bit quicker now. Here's, here's my uh, Elliot Erwitt um, dog photograph. No parking. You all know this guy, he's pretty cool. He's still there, um, well, probably not now. I wonder, I wonder if he's wearing a mask. Anyway, um, Movable Feast. Um, this was an interesting photograph really quickly. Um, she would, she, we were standing on a corner looking at this and this had to work in color, it only worked in color. And she looked out and she was really pretty, but she kept going back in, not seeing us, but she kept going back in and she would come out, look, come out. And so everybody else left, you know, three or four people I was with, and I saw a customer coming towards her. And I knew that this woman was gonna stick her head out and keep her head out. And sure enough, as her customer approached, she stuck her head out um, and um, there she is. And it's um, amongst all these colorful purses and things. And the other thing that's really interesting, here's a woman that's really enjoying, this is, um, this is um, New Year's, uh, Chinese New Year's, and she's having a great time, really enjoying it. And you see this other woman who says, this is really too noisy. I don't like the crowds, this is not fun. So it's just that dichotomy. Um, beach scenes, um, this, this, this was won a couple of awards and was in some magazines. It's, 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 it's again, yeah, um, I love that high contrast stuff. We saw that there's Elvis. Um, then we're going underground. So um, I wanted to show the underground stuff, what you can do really going down into the um, Metro station. Um, I took a lot of pictures in subway but that's my favorite one, um, using the whole subway. I didn't take it right through the door, because again, I'm using a 50 millimeter lens, but there's Captain America across the way. If anybody remembers the Twilight Zone where the, model where the um, mannequin turns into a real person, I'm just gonna go through these um, quickly because some of them we've already seen. Um, night shots at um, Fells Point. Um, when I said my influences were National Geographic and Life magazine, um, not anymore. All the books you see um, have to do with photography. I'm gonna give Sandy a list of um, the street photographers that I find really interesting. 
And um, that's my business card, actually. So I'm done. Okay, super. Well, I feel exhausted. I feel like I've been on the street with you out shooting. It's great. I'm like totally inspired. I wish I could get out there. We have um, some questions. Are sure. you up for ans answering some questions? Absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry it took so long. I didn't realize it was that long. No, it, no, it was great. Uh, I just feel like you did take us on a tour of um, street photography. Mm. Um, so yeah, you're getting a uh, great presentation, Steve, thanks. Uh, what I want to do is, I'm, uh, there's two questions. One is explaining in more detail what you mean by using program mode and flipping it very quickly. What are you flipping? I know you okay. talked about, yeah. Okay, so sure. And then I've got another really great question. That okay. I, yeah. Okay. If you, if you, most, most cameras these days have one or two um, dials on the top. Right? Um, I know Nikon, for instance, has two. They have a front dial and a back dial. Yeah. Front dial would do speed. Uh, depending on how it's set, the front dial does your um, shutter speed. The back dial does your aperture. But then you have the pro you have the modes. And you have aperture priority. You have shutter priority. You have program mode. You have auto. Do not use auto. Um, you have, and then you have those little icons for like the sports guy and the uh, close-ups and things like that. Program mode is when you set your camera to P. It's the, it's the letter P as in people. Um, and what that allows you to do is then you have to figure out, and I can't tell you, it depends on the camera, which dial it is on the front or back um, that you turn. Some cameras only have one dial. Okay, my camera has two dials. Um, some cameras only have the one dial. But if you set it to program mode and you move that dial, that little that, that finger dial on the top of the camera, okay, um, what that does is you'll see it change. Um, let me go. Let me go back really quickly to. Um, and you can you can do this in your menu also in the menu in your camera too. So it doesn't it doesn't have to be. Um, so do you all see that? Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Oh, yeah, sure. oh I'm not sharing my screen yet. Hold on a second. All right, do you all see that? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. so so what, what this is, this is just showing what my camera shows in the back, on the LCD screen in the back. Many of you will, sh will show it on the top, on the LCD on the top. Um, you'll see the, 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 the screen, you'll see what it says. But if you look at the middle one, okay, the middle one, if you look at the left-hand side, it says P, which is in the P, it's in the P mode. The re and there's nothing there. There's no little S or anything next to it. Oh, because that that is saying that the camera has chosen 350th of a second at f4.5. That's what P mode. That's what it chose itself. That was what it automatically did. Okay. I want to change that. So because it's in P mode, all I have to do, I don't have to put it in shutter priority. I don't have to put it in aperture priority. I can just change that dial at the top of the camera either the front or back, and you have to figure out which one it is. Mine, for one of my cameras, it's actually the back dial, and one of my cameras is actually the front dial. But what you can do is you change that, and if you watch it, and you can, you can do this yourself, look at the LCD while you're, while you're working with it. As you change that um, P mode, you'll see that that S pops up, which shows that you're changing it and you're doing something different. So in the top one, I changed it so that now I've got 750th of a second, the camera automatically, P mode is an automatic mode. But what, P, what the program mode does is it gives you automatic, um, um, it, it makes the camera automatic, but it doesn't do things like, if you have it in automatic, if you have put your camera in auto, which I do not recommend, it will pop up the flash if it needs it. You won't, you, you have no say over that. It changes the ISO. If it wants to change the ISO, you have no say over that. And it does basically everything automatically. It does a, new cameras do a pretty good job, but you have no control over the camera. In program mode, you set the um, ISO, it stays where you set it, okay? You set whether you want the shutter, you, you want the flash to pop up, 
it stays that way until you pop the flash up. So it gives you some, it gives you automatic features, but it gives you more control. And if you have it in this P mode, and I remember um, somebody talking um, once about um, trying to get, um, had the camera set to, a, it, it was a too much of a um, depth of field, so they couldn't blur out the background. Well, if you look, if you look here, if I flip my, flip my, um, um, that little dial to 750 of a second, I've got an F3.5, that's a pretty short depth of field and probably would blur out the background. Whereas the one at the bottom is uh, 40, uh, 40, I can't even say 145th of a second, I guess it is, and it gives you F13, which is a really long depth of field, and so a lot of stuff is gonna be, in, is gonna be sharp. But because I've got it in P mode, program mode, I can make that switch really fast. All I have to do is hit that button, you know, hit that dial and, and move it to the right or left. And what you need to do to practice, do you go to the right to make it faster or do you go to the left to make it faster? How do you do it? So you would just have to do it depends on the camera. Does that answer your question? Well, it made sense to me because I got my camera and I, uh, you know, worked it on my camera and I saw it. But um, Roger, did that answer the question? Y you were the one who asked it. So I'm hopeful that that was a good, a good answer. So, and and th this particular one, is, it shows in the back of my camera, but a lot of them will show it, the LCD is on the top of the camera when you go into like the menu or something but, and you see all this stuff. All these cameras, sh the camera shows you everything. It shows you what your f-stop is. It shows you what your just shutter to, just, speed is. Just to be sure, you Pardon? say flipping the dial, and, and is it the f-stop dial? Or I is don't know. It, 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 the program I, mode dial. I, it's, 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 the reason I don't know, you, you have to change the mode dial, which is usually on the left-hand side or in the menu. In the middle of the picture? To program mode. I understand that. But then you flip the dial when you're in program mode. What dial yeah. are you flipping then? Um, it depends on the camera. There's, um, for instance, no, my no, not, camera. Not which dial, what, what, what's the function of the dial you're flipping then? Um, the function of the dial, um, it's the little dials in front. And I don't, if, if. Is it the mode again? You're flipping the mode? No, 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 not the mode. It's you're the other one the on the right stop. hand side. It's the one that would normally either change your f-stop or it would change your shutter speed. For right. instance. Which are you trying to change? It doesn't matter. Once you have it in, um, uh, once you have it in P mode, you have to figure. If you have two dials in your camera, for instance, many many cameras have one dial. Like Canons, a lot of Canons have this one little dial. You, you know, flip like either the shutter speed or the or the f stop. Right, but yeah. you have to figure out which one it works. If you have two of those little dials, if you have two of those little um, um, dials, figure out which one works. For instance, in one camera, the back one changes when I have it in P mode, the back one changes everything. Um, in another camera I have, it's the front one. But some cameras only have one dial, like Canons, for instance, have one dial and you have to hit a button to make it aperture, aperture or whatever. But with your camera, whatever your camera is, set it to program mode and work the dial and see which dial is the one that makes it change. And once you figure that out, it makes it so easy to change the shutter speed or the depth of field just you know instantly and you don't have to figure out you don't have to say oh I want aperture I want to increase my aperture so I'm going to put it in aperture mode and I'm going to set the aperture and I'm going to take my picture and meanwhile you've lost everything the person has gone on or the street scene is gone whatever whereas if you have it in program mode and you figure out and you have to practice and you figure out which way which dot first you figure out which dial to turn it's the dial on the right hand side of the top of the camera on most cameras. You have to figure out which dial it is, front, back, or whatever. And then do you turn it to the, do you, do you flip it to the right, or do you turn it, do you turn it clock, counterclockwise or clockwise to increase or decrease? And I don't know because each camera is a little bit different. So the, 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 so the program mode, you set either in the menu on your camera, or usually there's a dial on the left-hand side. It's got P, A, um, auto, auto, S, um, Canons have TV for, for shutter speed and AV for aperture value. So what you want to do is you want to set it to P, which is program mode. And then figure out which dial on the right hand side is the one that controls that program mode. Does, did that answer your question, Roger? Yeah, yeah. I, see, you're either going to be changing the, the f-stop or the speed. Right, so what you'll do, but if it's- You choose program, which one you want. If, if you put it in program mode, it does it all for you. 
You okay. don't have to even, you don't have to worry about shutter speed or aperture. You're just going to change that one dial right or left. You don't have to worry about shutter speed or anything because what happens in this situation is the camera is going to choose, for instance, in the middle one here that you're looking at, when I shot this out my window, the camera meter chose 350th of a second at f4.5. That's what it shows. That was the median. That's what the camera says is the, is the right shot. Well, if I want to keep uh, uh, the same exposure, I'm I keeping see. the same exposure, but I'm changing the shutter speed and I'm changing all this other stuff. So if you look at the image, the image is exactly the same as far as the exposure goes, okay? Yep. But I've changed the shutter speed on the one at the top and it's 750 to a second, but now it's a really shallow depth of field. So if I want, if I want a really shallow depth of field, I'm gonna flip that switch really fast. And if you look at the image on the right-hand side, sort of you can see the fact that the one at the top has a shallow depth of field the one at the bottom has a longer depth of field but it's really fast it's so much faster to do it in program mode because you only have to worry about one dial gotcha good great um and i really want to get this um question in so um diane i'm going to ask for you D steve are you there yeah Oh, good. Um, do you think that the pandemic will change the way you take street photography in the future, the types of compositions, interactions with your subjects, focusing more on eyes above the mask or something like that? Does lens, what do you think about how this is going to shift? So here's, here's my thing about that. I think it will change absolutely nothing. Because if you remember, this whole program is about the idea of how people interact or impact their environment. So if you've got a bunch of people wearing masks and they're walking around the street, what are they doing? There's still, some people are still doing weird things. I mean, you might get some people in a fight, one person wearing a mask, one person not, you know, you, you, you're right there. So I think the idea, I think the, 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 this pandemic, um, the only thing that's changed the pandemic is obviously there's, you know, oh, I take that back. I was gonna say, obviously there's no crowds. That's not true, there are yeah. plenty of crowds. But I think it's really not going to change anything because the idea is not necessarily taking pictures of people. Now, yeah, you're not going to get the you're not going to get the um, the um, portraits that you want necessarily because you can get their eyes um, and not the rest of their face. But at the same time, if you're socially distanced, you can ask somebody to pull their mask down, and maybe they will, maybe they won't. That's just portraits. But as far as street photography goes, if you notice, there's some street photographs I had that didn't even involve people. So there's, I have a couple of photographs with actually masks that are laying on the ground or gloves that are laying on the ground. And it's talking all about COVID and all that type of kind of stuff, but there's no people around. So I don't think it's going to change how you take street photography if you remember that street photography isn't just about taking pictures of people, but how they interact or how they impact their environment. And so... Um, I don't think it's, it's gonna change because we're gonna look differently. It's changing because in most places we're gonna go, at least where I'm gonna go, there will not be a lot of people because I'm not, I'm not gonna hang out at bars and go to crowded uh, you know, um, carnivals and things, which are canceled anyway. But I don't think it's gonna change street photography. It's gonna make it different and it'll be different kinds of shots, different kinds of images. But, um, but I, I, don't, I don't think, I think again, if you think about street photography as um, not just pictures of people, but how they impact their, 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 their environment, how, how, what people do. I mean, leaving scraps of paper that say, God bless you and please help, you know, that's somebody impacting the world. And, you know, but there's no person involved. There is a person involved, but there's no photograph of a person. Yeah. Does that answer the question? Well, it does for me, Diane, how about you? Fantastic, she says. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, cool. so that's it. Um, oh, Steve, thank you so much for sharing uh, all welcome. your, you know, ideas and your images. It was like, it was great fun for me because I like street photography. So, and I've got uh, more ideas and more interest to get out there. So thank you. You're very welcome. I, 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 I. I, it, I'm passionate about it. I can tell. I'm passionate about photography. Look, Anybody else? 
Yeah, with a mask, do you need the same kind of model release if you can't really identify them? <laughs> um, probably not. Um, the, the whole idea of model releases um, is if somebody is, can be identified, look, there's two things you need to know. If you take a street photograph in this country, which is really great, but not in every state, there's some states that are like screwed up, as we all know. But um, in this country, if, if you're out in the street, the presumption is you are in public. And if you're in public, anybody can take pictures of you, including all the cameras that are up in the sky and everywhere else taking pictures of you. I mean, you're photographed all over the place. Um, I, was, I was actually talking to Sandy the other day of thinking about since, you know, in, in all of our years, how many photographs are we in? Like if we went to Disneyland, how many pictures are we in, you know, of, of other people? But the whole idea of, 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 of if, you, if you take one of those people and you say to them, oh, could you, you're really an interesting looking person. Could you stand over here for me in front of this wall and let me take a picture of you? Now they're a model. And now you need a model release. All right. That is my big suggestion. And here's the thing about the model release and, and model. If you're never going to sell it, if it's not going to make a million dollars, if it's not going to appear in a museum, if you're not using it for commercial purposes, you're using for educational purposes or editorial, you're probably going to be okay. And I said probably, because if somebody sees that picture and they say, hey, I didn't tell you you could use that, you could be in trouble for it. Here's the other thing. If you see a person and you're taking a picture in public and you say something like, and he's walking out of a bar and you say, this drunk is walking out of a bar and he just broke up with his wife and he got into a big fight, stuff like that, and that's libel. And you can get in big trouble for that. So you don't want to say something about somebody that's not true either. So even if it's in public and it's a street shot, you don't want to libel somebody and say something you know, negative. But I think with the masks, I think that's a good question. However, think about this. There are these people who are wearing some masks that are really identifiable. Right? They've even sewed their own mask or something or other, their clothes. If they think and they can prove that it's them, then you might have an issue. I, I don't know. But um, my point would be if you ask somebody to pose for you, all right, I would suggest that you get a model release. I'm not saying you have to. That's really up to you. And it depends on how you're going to use the photograph. Um, I have a lot of photographs of people that I've not get, gotten um, 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 releases for, but I show them in school. It's for educational purposes, show people what portraits look like. And I don't put them on my website. And, you know, I, I don't use them for commercial purposes. Commercial purposes also means if you own a gallery or something and you're using that photograph to bring people into your gallery or to look at your website to buy photographs from you, that's a commercial purpose. Even if you're not selling that particular photograph, you're using it for commercial purposes. So that could be an issue. Would it be an issue? I have no idea who's gonna see it, you know? I mean, if the person is not gonna see it, it'll never happen, but you never know if somebody says, hey, Joe, I just saw a picture of you on the internet. Um, did you know you were on the internet? And then there you go and you're in big trouble. And there have been actual legal cases where spouses have sued their ex-spouse because they didn't get permission while they were married. I mean, oh my God, I mean, yeah, it's crazy, but that's the way it is. We're a very litigious society. So my suggestion is if you ask somebody to pose for you, they're a model. And if they're a model, get a release. Releases are easy. They're really simple. And as a matter of fact, you can do something in kind. You know, you can give them a couple of bucks. You can give them, a, you, you know, send them a, a, an, an image. Be careful about that because some judges say if you get, if you paid somebody a dollar and you made a thousand dollars on the image, that's not kind, so you might get in a little bit trouble for that. But um, I'm going to say, just get a release. Download the ones that are on on um, cell phone, on on, on um, smartphones and iPads. And again, you, they can sign it right there, and you can actually just email it to them. And then you have their email, you have their signature, you have all that stuff ready to go. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, can I, Steve, I just want to say I love it. It was a great presentation. Thank you, Kay. Really Thank enjoyed you. every bit of it. Thank you. Thank you. And um, it's like the, the convention, you know, the production of the 
Democratic uh, National Convention when they have the... <laughs> no, <laughs> have a couple no, people clapping. <laughs> no, Pelosi. not that way. Let's do Pelosi. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, but that's, that's, that's my thing about street. Um, if anybody has any questions about post-processing, boy, that's been done a long time ago. Every, you know, we've done a lot of post-processing um, articles and things like that, but um, this was basically about how do you get the shot? How do you find what you're looking for? Uh, Steve, you said you were gonna email me something about okay. masks. Yeah, I'm gonna email you um, within the next couple of days a reading list. Okay, yeah. good, and, and I'll share that with everybody. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm thinking. Um, I mean, some things, Vivian Mayer's books, there's several books on hers, including a book that came out that's all about her, and it's way different than the movie that came out about her, so it gets more into detail. Um, there's other books that have no photographs in it. There's a book, one of the books, it's called uh, The Photograph Not Taken, which is really fascinating book, but I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna share with you um, some of the, and I can't say inspiration, or influences because I was taking photographs before I knew any of these people, but um, they're certainly inspiring. I mean, Cartier-Bresson and um, um, Cors uh, the Corsia and all these other great street photographers. But when you look at their work, what's the difference between their work and let's say your work or my work? It's they're getting out there, they're marketing their work, and maybe they were first. Other than that, I think street photography is street photography. And you can all make great street photography. Steve, do you have a book out? Um, I do, actually. Um, if you go to Blurb and um, look up my name, the book on the, the oh. pardon? You know what I was going to say, Steve? Put that in the email. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. And, then, and then I just share it with everybody. I'd like it, too. Uh -huh. All right. It, yeah, so I, don't, I don't know what the cost is, but I make five bucks on it. <laughs> well, just uh, put it in the information that you're sharing and I'll share it with everyone. Okay, I'll try to, I will remember to do that. If I, if I don't do that, please, I know you'll get back to me and say, Steve, you forgot to put that in. Because that's what I've been doing for the last... Well, you scare, you, 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 you scare me. You, 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 you intimidate me. I, I listen. I listen. And also, I think you were mentioning you're teaching classes. Yes, I'm teaching classes at CCBC. I'm teaching a um, digital photography, um, the, the one intro, digital photography one, which I've taught for, so I've taught at CCBC for 10 years. I'm teaching, um, I'm also teaching a two-dimensional design and I'm still trying to figure out how that's gonna be taught online because I really don't know. Uh -huh. um, and then at Osher, which is Towson University's adult education program, I'm teaching an eight-week course on um, social reform through photography. And it starts in the um, late 1800s um, with Jacob Riss and people like that and others and comes up to the um, current. It's not about conflict photography. It's not about war photography. It's about social um, yeah. issues and um, you know, how, how how Jacob Riss helped get rid of the tenements in New York and, and that sort of thing, uh, Lewis Hine. Um, and that's an eight week course at Osher. And of course that's online also. Um, so send a link in the email as well for people if yeah. there's any slides okay. left. I, 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 you have, I don't think you can join unless you're over 50. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, look, you can look up, actually, if you look up Osher. God bless you for thinking I'm so young. I just, I just want to say that if you look up Osher, if you go, if you Google Osher, it comes up, Towson University's um, um, Life Enrichment Program, Osher, and they, even, they have the catalog in there. And they also did this year, because it's online, they also have all the um, instructors doing a little video. And I've got a little video explaining my instruct, my, my, uh, uh, my class, but they also have the catalog and all that and the prices and, and whatever. And, um, and, and it's, um, it's really a lot of fun when I, I taught one class before the pandemic, one class or 60 people in it. And um, they really liked it. And um, then of course it was just canceled. And then they're actually now teaching everybody how to use Zoom. Oh, there you go. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then since Zoom is great, since Zoom is so easy, so wonderful, the school's now using um, Microsoft Teams. I do not like 
Microsoft Teams. Yeah. It is technically a disaster. Oh. But it's here to stay. <laughs> it is here to stay. It's in, because everybody owns Microsoft 360. And it's part, it's part of that suite. So anyway, but um, yeah. So I'll try to remember to put all that stuff in, in the link. But you can, you can actually go to Osher's website and it's got the uh, written catalog, but also little blurbs by each um, instructor. And if you want, you can kind of like, you know, go through it really quickly and, and, and see what, um, what's going on. Oh. There you go. Uh. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Are you, serious? Are you serious? It's 50 bucks now? Jesus. You better up your uh, percent. Wow. There. No, no, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Whatever it sells for, um, I put in there that I want $5. So whatever it sells for, I get $5. Yeah, that's this is the book on two faces of affairs. It's actually pretty good. It actually came out pretty well. I have another book that I'm going to be putting up too. The one that's on um, the um, 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 unlimited um, access. So it's got um, more street stuff in it. But that's going to be more expensive. I can't figure out how to do that yet because it's too expensive. So Great. yeah. So that that was that was my book on blur. Thank you. Who who's, who sent that up? Jay. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's amazing that you found it so fast. <laughs> but yeah, but um, yeah. So it's it's it, it's a good book. And if you want, of course, um, I will be happy to sign it for you. <laughs> if you actually, if you buy one. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, all right. Any any other questions? I'm here to answer any questions you have. Okay, so I'll be um, sending everybody a follow up email. Give me, give me like a couple of days. I'm gonna, I'll put the whole thing together. Okay. Um, mostly the streets, street books and some really interesting stuff that you can all read. Super. Oh, um, I, I, and I, I did. you in, uh, for another two days. Yeah, I did show you, um, hold on a second. I'm gonna share my screen one last time. Didn't work. Here it goes. Okay. <laughs> so, you this these are all these are all my photography books. Mm. And if you can actually, it, it it's like it's ridiculous. But anyway, I won't give you a list of all of them. Don't worry. <laughs> Any other questions I can help you, I can answer for you? Feel free, you can um, email me. Um, it's um, steve underscore dembo at yahoo.com. <laughs> All if right. Anybody wants to go, if anybody wants to go out shooting, as long as you stay six feet apart and wear masks, feel free, let me know. So that is changing the way you do photography. <laughs> yeah, that part. Yeah. Well, no, the good thing is nobody recognizes me. <laughs> so if somebody gets angry at me for taking a picture, they don't know who I am. They'll never see me. <laughs> that was the hard part of being at the hospital. You know, I never, I, you can never see any of the nurses or anything. You know, they have beautiful eyes, but you can never see anything else. I, it's really kind of boring. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Oh, there's Camilla. Hey. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Sandy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Right, bye, Sandy, everybody. Can, can you hang back a second? Sure. No, Sandy, not okay. Steve. Steve. <laughs> nice job, Steve. You don't, you don't want me. Okay. I can. I, I just have Mike. Thanks a lot, bud. <laughs> no, Thanks, Steve. Bye, everybody. See you, everybody. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Sandy, I, I went to a service photo today. Yes. And uh, Burke was there, and he was asking what we were doing with yeah. the club. And I mentioned to him that you were running the, the programs, and we've been going every week, and he didn't even take, the, <laughs> take time off during the summer. Uh, he said he would be interested in doing a program. Fabulous. For us and uh, 
he said in particular, he's, there's a lot of stuff camera wise that's going on that he said he wanted to share. But specifically, he said he had a, uh, a video that he would like to show that uh, goes through the tech, the, the guy who invented the mirrorless technology. And that he would go, uh, he said that's a really interesting uh, film that he, he'd like to share with the group if we were interested. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I did ask him and he said anytime, um, mm -hmm. he was really busy at the time. He said anytime. So I know uh, okay. that, you know, he's, he's, not that bit, he's not that busy anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess it did change. Um, but do you know how video works on Zoom? Uh, Steve and I tried on one of his and I said, no, the sound is not good. Um, well, that's, you know? that's, interest, that's interesting because when we did the um, last week or week before, when we, sh when we shared the, um, the different videos, some of them worked well and some didn't. So it was kind of a, a mixed bag. Okay. What? What's that? I, I, this is Kay. Uh, yep. I thought my little video worked you, fine. Your, oh. Yours sounded fine. So, yeah. But some of the others had, had the, the sound was a little bit off. It, the images seemed a, a, a little bit soft focus. Yeah, I thought that, and I it could be my sound system, but it just, uh, it's a little tinny in terms of, it, it, there's noise. Yeah. Um, so, okay, well, I, I just wanted to know, I thought, well, maybe I'm missing something about Zoom. Maybe I'm missing, um, that Zoom, you know, that we need to do something with uh, Zoom in order to get it to handle videos is what I'm thinking. Well, you, you know, Sandy, I did a, uh, a thing from uh, CCBC. They had a presentation and uh, the instructor there, there did a Zoom session yeah. and he showed videos and it was spot on. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so I, it, there may be something in there. I'll, I'll look it up too. I'll look it up online, seeing if and, they have some. And it could have been Steve's, Steve's sound system as well. I mean, his computer and, but, but it did not work. So I had to say, let's not include that. Sure, there. sure. So yeah. no, okay. So what should I do with um, Burke? Well, if you have the time, I mean, it's certainly I not do. A... I mean, oh, I, okay. I'm, <laughs> no, I want to um, start building on my, Mm -hmm. I think by October. I'm into late October. Okay. Well, that that's that's I probably will. perfect. <laughs> um, what we're doing is what I'm running into is that um, these photographers that I've been contacting, you know, big name, yes. they're now getting smart and charging. Ah. <laughs> I mean, at first, I thought, well, you know, we are, you know we've got all this time we can donate it because we'll be out there soon and then the pandemic you know <laughs> it, it you know it changes and they know they're not going to be out there doing these workshops anytime soon so now they're getting okay now we got to make money with all of this so as a club we're, we're working on that okay okay and well, um so anyway that's what sort of i'm i've stopped and so I could fit service photo in really nicely. Okay. All right. Well, well, he's, I told him I would let you know. Okay. And, uh, cool. yeah. And like I said, I'll do a little research on my end. Maybe I'll call this guy who did the presentation because he didn't have his, like I said, everything was very good. His video was, was spot on. So yeah. there, there may be a tweak in, in with Zoom. I heard something about Zoom and video, so I don't know. I just want to, if we do something with Burke, I want to be prepared for that. So, and Burke oh, yeah. and I can, you know, we can, um, he and I can figure it out. I mean, he can try it with, uh, you know. That's okay, I can help too. I'm like <laughs> you so don't, exhausted. <laughs> you don't have to be Superwoman. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's a concept. No, I actually <laughs> said no the other day. They asked me to teach. Towson asked me to teach another class. Oh, that's amazing. No. <laughs> no. I mean, that's not worth it. My heart <laughs> recently. 
you're start you're starting to like that word too well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So okay. Okay. So yeah. I'll catch up with I'll catch up with you later. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Bye.